Hello, mighty 7th grade social studies teacher, Miss Hughes here to discuss the social and political organization of the Roman Republic. Today's standard that we will be covering is describe the political institutions of monarchy, democracy, republic, empire, and theocracy in the River Valley civilizations and classical empires between 3500 BC and 600 CE. You'll know you'll have the standard mastered when you can correctly describe the social and political organization of the Roman Republic, which you will demonstrate in your formative assessment after your Edmentum tutorial and watching this awesome mini lesson video. In true, why do we even study history, Ms. Hughes, fashion? The Romans look to the past and try to improve the future of their government. They basically combine the features of a monarchy and a democracy. The goal being not one single ruler had all the power. Does that sound familiar? Think about our democracy in the United States and our system of checks and balances. Remember, a monarchy is a system of government ruled by one king or queen. Mono meaning one ruler. A democracy is a system of government in which citizens vote to pick their leaders. There are two classes of citizens in the Roman Republic. There's the patricians, which are the upper class wealthy landowners. They held almost all of the political power and created the laws. And then there's the lower class citizens known as the plebeians. I think plebe, pedal, bottom, bottom layer, bottom class. Roman slaves were not considered citizens. It's important to note that Roman slaves were mostly conquered people from Roman military expansions. Roman slavery was not based on the ideas of race like it when you think of American slavery. Which social class holds the most power in the U.S. today? Which class, social class in the U.S. is the largest? Ding, ding, ding! If you think of the upper and lower classes in the U.S., it's very similar to Roman Republic society. One of the big differences in, Roman, in the Roman Republic is only men were allowed to vote. In the U.S., women did not gain the right to vote till 1920, which was almost 100 years ago. We also have other disenfranchised groups in the U.S. who did not gain the right to vote till way later in history. So how did the Roman Republic work? You have the two consuls at the top. They commanded the military and made all the important decisions. They served for one year. Each consul could overrule the other. So if one consul wanted to go to war and the other one didn't, they could overrule them. The next was the Senate. The Senate was made up of roughly 300 patricians. Remember, the patricians are the wealthy, upper-class landowners. They advised the consuls, the two people at the top, and made financial and foreign policies. Right below the Senate is the two assemblies. The assemblies were made up of the plebeian classes, and one of these assemblies elected the consuls. Elected officials known as tribunes made sure that the patricians respected the plebeians' rights. Fun fact! In times of war, the Republic could elect a dictator for up to six months. If you recall from sixth grade, a dictator is someone who rules, usually through force. All male citizens served in the Roman army. A powerful Roman army helped ensure that Rome could expand all throughout Europe, which is more to come in the next lesson. Today in Edmentum, you will work through slides 17 through 21. It just covers the content that I reviewed. Then please make sure that you answer the diagram question, complete activities A, B, and C, and complete sentences. And then lastly, complete the self-reflection. Once you have watched this wonderful mini lesson, completed the Edmentum slide tutorials, then you will complete the Google Form assessment that is linked into the Google Classroom. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, we are here to help you. Please send an email and have a mighty day.